Hi, I'm Jason Mears, and this is vCenter Server, clone a VM to another VM, part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. So I'm just in hosts and clusters. I've got a vCenter Server, data center, and two clusters underneath. But I'm going to move to my second uh, vCenter Server and second data center, where I have a Windows 10 um, virtual machine with a K2 grid card uh, and I've just called this one grey. I'm going to use it as a template for my uh, red, blue, green and yellow virtual machines. I've created the red, green and blue. I still need to do the yellow one. So I'm just going to clone this VM to a, temp uh, to a virtual machine. I could do a template or a template to a library but in this case I want to do it to another virtual machine. I've deliberately created this grey one as the base one for my other four machines and it's a Windows 10 with a K2 grid. This is the yellow one and it's going to be on an IP address .94. So that's the details for the new virtual machine and I pick a host to put it on. I pick storage, I'll pick the 500 gig SSD. Um, got an option to customize operating system my machine hardware and power it on after creation I'm going to leave these the same just for the time being I'm just going to do an exact clone and then I'm going to do some work to make it different so that there's no conflicts or clashes or uh, problems with it because again having two machines with identical names and IP addresses on the same network not a good idea but we'll just work through that we'll do a, a straight clone with no customization so the clone is finished now and we've got a new machine called Windows 10 K2 Grid Yellow uh, .94 IP address. And if I edit the settings on this, I just want to make sure that the um, network adapter is connected to power on and it's on the correct VLAN, which it is. Standard switch 0, VLAN 0. That's the only one I've actually got presented on this host. I just use it for um, desktops and VDI hosts. You can see that this is using a profile from an NVIDIA Grid K2, something I've demonstrated in previous videos. It's basically a big powerful graphics card that can be carved up and shared between multiple virtual machines, the kind of thing you use in VDI and end user computing environments. So it's important to note that because that's got a physical video card or graphics card, not a virtual one, our web console isn't going to work because we're not using the standard VMware adapter and very shortly um, the VMware remote console is also going to stop working because again we're not using a virtual graphics card we're using a physical one so I would either have to plug something into the back of the card or use another method such as terminal services so if you are going to do something like this with pass video pass through or with grid cards make sure you have something like terminal services or another form of remote access like VNC or something else so that you can always get to the card because the web client and the remote console use the virtual graphics card which gets replaced or substituted by a physical graphics card so I'm just using Microsoft terminal services if you've not used terminal services before I do have a video on this um, in, a, in another in another part on the um, VMs containers and workloads playlist so we're gonna go to change settings and what I'm gonna do is change it from gray to, to yellow the only correct name so you can see because I did a clone it has exactly the same name I'm going to change this to W10K2 Y for yellow 94 for .94 IP address. So once this machine has restarted it will have a different name because it's not a good idea to have two hosts on the same network with the same name. The other thing I'm going to have to do is change the IP address. So I'll restart later. I'm not ready to restart just yet. And what I'm going to do is change the IP address on the network card to the one I want and avoid any kind of problems with um, duplicates on the network. It's going to go to IP version 4 and I'm going to put in a fixed IP address 192.168.0.94 I'm sticking a slash 24 subnet and a default gateway. I'm going to put in DNS servers which are actually domain controllers which are created in another video 
at some point we're going to join these machines to the domain so it's a good idea to have them pointing at the AD domain controllers first now I'm just going to go and disable NetBIOS over TCP IP so it's important to notice that at this point I've just changed the IP address that, I've, that I am connecting to this machine on so I'm going to lose my connection now and as you can see it's stalled so I'm going to have to close this connection down What I'm going to have to do is start another terminal services um, connection or MSTSE, Microsoft Terminal Services Client, but change the IP address to the 9.4 address that we just changed it to. So because we changed the IP address whilst we were remote controlled, we lost remote control. So I have to put my details back in again because it looks like a different machine on a different IP address prompts me for warnings about certificates again because again it looks like a new machine on a new address and we should continue back from where we left off so now that's that's the computer name changed and the IP address changed we should be able to do a restart and allow those changes to take effect so the issue we're trying to address here is that because we created a clone, it was exactly the same as another machine and we really didn't want two machines with the same name and the same IP address on the network at once. Although it's unlikely it would have got the same IP address because we were using DHCP. But that if that had been a fixed IP address, obviously it would have had the same IP address. So hopefully that's had time to restart. Well, it's probably still in the process of booting but we'll, uh, we'll try and connect to it now anyway. So we're going to log in again now and we'll just have a quick look around. So I've cloned these machines because I have four identical machines I want to create. I'm going to call them red, yellow, green, blue. But all that software you can see installed there, I didn't want to have to do it four times. So I created a machine called Gray. I was just going to use it as a template. And once I'd installed all the software I wanted, I was going to clone it. Um, so to create four more of them. And the idea would be I would change the background um, to red, yellow, green or blue. So that I've now got four VDI desktops that I can demonstrate in another video. But it was just a quick way of creating four machines rather than having to install all the software separately every time. And as you can see there it's on a 94 IP address and the host name is correct as well. So we'll just close that down. So although we've closed it down the machine is actually still running. We're just not seeing anything on screen. Just the other point to show you here is if we have a look at the MAC address, the Media Access Control address, it ends in 3EBF. That's a unique identifier for the network card. And if I look at the original virtual machine that I created it from, that should have a different MAC address, 8DB4. So although it's a clone, VMware is clever enough to make sure it has a different MAC address so that the network cards do not have the same address or conflict or clash with each other. So that was how to clone one virtual machine to another virtual machine as part of the vSphere 7 Home Lab series. So thank you very much for your time and I hope you found that useful.